Hey guys, Boo here. Um, I've decided to create some more tutorials. These ones are going to cover things that I haven't really done in the past. And I think it's about time for those who really want to get into creating your first models for Gary's Mod. And be covering stuff such as actually making models in Blender and other small little details which I have covered in other videos but I haven't really gone in depth such as transparency into textures, making glow-in-the-dark textures, etc, etc. So first of all the tools that you are going to need is a modeling program. My suggestion, the one I use in all my videos is Blender. Um, I'll create another video on again how to control this, how to create models that will be done in the future. Now, uh, the first thing you're going to need is a tool for Blender, which are the SMD tools. And let me just search SMD tools for Blender. And it should be one of these. If I go to the Evolve Developer website and I scroll down to the very bottom, it's going to, ah, it's right here. Install download tools. Right. So just go ahead, download the tools. Let it, like, Okay, now you're going to download the zip. Don't extract the zip. Instead, go to Blender, File, uh, User Preferences, Add ons. Then you can go over here, Install from File. Then you need to find your file. I'm just going to go to Documents, and it should be in Downloads, hopefully. And I guess not. So I'll just go from my C drive, Users, My Name, Where's Downloads? downloads and here it is so install from file and it should be right here now you just little tick this hopefully oops tick it and next time you restart blender these tools should show up now right now they are not here oh no they're here Instant. okay so <laughs> apparently they install instantly which is great okay our next tool that we're gonna need is a video uh, not a video but a photo editing software in my suggestion is paint.net uh, for some reason the icon isn't showing very well but um, paint.net and yes Google it, it's looks like this I know a lot of computers have this nowadays please just, for the love of God there's this uh, don't use like the paint that comes with Windows just, no just please do yourself a favor and um, one of the interesting things about this is there's actually a tool for this which allows you to edit VTF files uh, directly. Now it, you can't create VMT files but it allows you to open v VTF files and edit them directly which is great because um, VTF files are basically the texture of uh, your model. And speaking of VTF, you're going to need a program called VTF Edit. Now you're going to be doing a lot of things with this and it's always good uh, for previewing and for the actual coding of the um, VMTs because if you make a mistake then it will instantly throw an error so you know you screwed up somewhere so I'm gonna go ahead and install VTF edit yes yes do not create uh, yes yes next next okay VTF edit is installed next you're going to need something to edit text with my suggestion you could either use notepad if you do not feel like installing more programs or you can get notepad plus plus which is great if you're a programmer because you can do all sorts of cool stuff and it comes with all this special colored code and everything so you have that next you're going to need another tool called dxt vmp now this one is if you're going to be doing a lot of models from scratch it helps a lot because this is what will let you use transparency. Now, obviously, Paint.net supports transparency, which is great, but um, it doesn't quite work very well for the source engine. So I'm going to instead use this external program, which allows me to edit Targa files, and I can create my own alpha maps. I'll cover this in one of the transparency tutorials. So I need to scroll down. Download, please. And in the meantime, you're going to need another tool called Crowbar. And it helps if you search Crowbar Source Tools. 
There you go. And this allows you to decompile MDL models. This is good if you accidentally screw up and you lose your original files, or if you just wish to extract someone else's files. I already have Crowbar installed in this computer. Uh, well, uh, not installed, but um, but extracted in an archive over here in my Gmod folder. So I'm not going to get it right now, but I have it right here. And after, uh, you're going to need another tool. You could either use Crowbar for compiling, decompiling. Because um, if you want, I more, am more of a fan of GUI Studio MDL for when it comes to compiling. It is a little annoying to set up the first time, but um, once you get it, it works really well. It's fast, and it has some other features that I like that Crowbar does not. And I will again show how this works um, in this video. So I'm going to go ahead. Ah, okay. So apparently you don't need to actually install it, which means I definitely have it right here. So if I go ahead and run it, uh, so it's going to say that my orange box tools are invalid. So what you need to do is you need to go here, set orange box uh, tools path, and you want to go ahead to your Gary's Mod folder, which in my case would be computer C. Uh huh. Now Steam should be around here somewhere. Steam, Steam apps. Let me uh, common. Now Gary's Mod should be over here. And you want to open up the bin folder because this is where everything is going to be. And I'm gonna. I need to load up a QC. So I'm just going to quickly find something that I have running just to make sure it works. And no, this is my wrong folder. So add-ons, let me no, not this one. Uploads WIP. Let me try something fast. Uh no. I was fine with this. So no, it's in here. Sorry. Reference QC. If I compile. Okay, it compiles, and the good thing is because you set it to your Gary's Mod folder, it will compile directly into your Gmod folder. So if you go ahead to your Gary's Mod folder, models, weapons, it should be right here, which is really useful. And one of the things that I like about this program that uh, Crowbar doesn't support is if I go back to that uh, QC file, if I can find it, um, where is it? Swords. Yes, uh, QC, QC, this right here, I can open with that program directly and it will load the QC directly into the program. While Crowbar, you have to go and manually set the path for the program, for the QC. Now, uh, the QC, for those of you who don't know, is basically just a big wad of text, uh, and this will basically tell the, uh, the program where to uh, where to put the model, as well as what things the model should have, such as um, how it should bend and all that stuff. Um, obviously, uh, it's going to error since I haven't set up um, episode one, but uh, it doesn't matter if you try to if you try to compile. It's obviously going to error since you don't have um, uh, episode one set. So you just click here, orange box, um, game info path should be for Gary's mod, and you can just compile. And uh, it'll compile instantly the program that the QC that you just opened. Now, some of you might not have a working um, when you try to compile, it won't work. You need to go to your Gary's Mod folder. Uh, I have a shortcut on my desktop, but another way of getting to it is you go to your Steam library, Gary's Mod, right click, local files, um, browse local files, and you'll open up your Gary's Mod folder. And if you find this file over here called gameinfo.txt, go ahead and copy and paste it into your bin folder. It should be in here. And this, as well as the game config while you're at it. And this should hopefully fix any problems that you might have with the program compiling. So with that program all set up, next thing you're going to need is, again, the DXTBMP if the program wishes to actually open up. But apparently the internet over here does not seem to be wanting to do it. So hold on a sec. DX, DXT BMP. 
Oh, I hate this website, but I'm gonna go ahead and because I don't really have much of a choice. Ah, no, it's probably going to install some other. No, I don't want to sign in through Facebook. Ah, no. It, please tell me this is just the the DXTBMP itself and not some other crap that they usually install. Uh, hopefully. The, yeah, this is it. I know that. So install. It's a really old program, so it's going to look a bit Windows 95-ish. But it's a great tool, and it works really well for what we need. It's a really quick extraction too. So I'm going to explain this program when I get into transparency. You don't need to worry too much about it right now. And last but not least, you're going to need another program called Crazy Bump. And what Crazy Bump is is it allows you to create um, bump maps. And uh, for those of you who don't know what bump maps are, uh, just essentially you see this flat picture here. Loading it into this program creates this little blue map. If I could actually, yeah, this little blue map, which will show, yes, this. And this basically makes your model look like this. Now, obviously, you have a flat model. But this little blue map creates bumps, which makes the model look a lot more detailed than it actually is. And it's really useful for making your models look a lot better. Oh, and I closed it. Now, one of the issues with Crazy Bump is that it is a 30-day free trial. After the 30 days, you uh, it will leave watermarks all over the um, the program itself. But uh, if you do not wish to actually purchase the product, because I know a lot of you do not feel like it, especially given how expensive this thing is, you can. There's a trick for Windows, I know at least. Ah, crazy bump, which you can reset the trial and basically make it run indefinitely. So I know there's a bunch of these. If you want, you can also find a crack. But if you're a bit more skeptical, you can always do an infinite trial reset, and that's a lot more safer than downloading some random program off the internet that could probably have lots of other things you don't want in your computer. And with all these tools, you should be ready to start making your new models for Gary's Mod.